and welcome to my new video which is all about a winter trap top from the 1950s that I made. And this video is going to be a bit different than what I usually make because it's not as instructional but more of a vlog style. So I filmed some bits during the process where I talked about where I stand with the project. And I did this because I thought I would struggle a lot with the pattern because the pattern is quite weird. But it turned out that it was actually pretty straightforward and I didn't struggle that much and I could have also explained how to make one yourself. But I didn't know that. So now I have a lock video and I hope it still is entertaining although I'm not struggling with the construction and the pattern as much as I thought I would. Uh, but a bit of a backstory about me and those kind of tops. I stumbled across those vintage wrap tops which are usually made of a very lightweight jersey uh, several times on Pinterest and I was also very interested in that because they seemed very easy to make which was also the advertisement of the times back then that were they were easy to make, they were easy to wear and probably easy to wash because most garments back in the 50s were made out of woven materials and those wrap tops were made out of jersey which doesn't need to be ironed. So I wanted to make one for myself and I stumbled upon the back side of this pattern. I always saw the front with the pretty drawings but never the actual pattern. And I would have made it completely different than it was suggested back then. And when I saw this pattern it was really really strange but you're going to see it in this video. And I had no idea how to construct it <laughs> and how to sew it together. But then I saw all the instructions on how to make this garment on a website which I will link down below because it's a great website and without that I wouldn't have a clue how to sew this together. So let's get into the video and hear me talking about this top a lot. So from the pattern this is supposed to be the sleeve and if I got this correctly this is the back uh, seam and this is the center back on fold and back here is the waist and this is the front. I'm really confused with this pattern but that's part of the process, that's why I did it because I was so confused. Let's see how it works. Yesterday evening I made a mock-up um, for the wrap top and I figured the pattern out. I have to confess not on my own. I found a very nice blog who shows um, she shows how to make one of those and without that I wouldn't have got it at all. But, as I said, I figured it out. And it's a little bit confusing probably for you now because uh, I have had to piece something together. So this, imagine this piece in pink. Anyway, I have the center back seam here and you kinda hear the sleeves as you see. And here's the waist tie, which is too short for now. I will make it obviously longer. So here's this waist tie. And you kind of put it on like this. Uh, nope. Yeah, that goes around your neck. That goes around your neck. So it's very bunched up back in the neck. And then it goes like that. Here's the sleeve and you wrap it like so. You see? And it has those uh, bat wings thingy it, which was quite a trend in the 50s and yeah it gathers nicely and I have to make a few adjustments because I noticed this is a little bit too short for me so I made this a little bit I will make this a little bit longer down here and I also will obviously make the ties longer and widen the back up here a little bit, I think, because that's a little bit tight too. Yeah, so I'll cut this out. I'm pretty confident in cutting this out from the real fabric. And I will show you the construction a little bit more detailed, but that is the mock-up and it works surprisingly well. Honestly, I think my cats enjoy mock-ups much more than I do.
So the fabric I picked for the 1950s wrap top is this, um, I don't know, nude skin colored uh, jersey and it's not cotton, it's, it's something, it's more like a spandex thing but it's a vintage fabric I got from my grandmother and it has the perfect length for the pattern so it fits perfectly on it and I will be able to cut this without wasting much fabric which is always great and yeah it has a little bit of a shine to it and I honestly if you look at my skin at this I don't know if this will be a flattering uh, piece for me but still I feel like this fabric calls for this top so that's what I'm gonna make I have just cut sorry that was loud um, I have just cut the top out and I'm ready for assembly so you see if you I can't remember if I filmed the, the, the pattern the first time very nicely but I think you can see really well it's, it's an awkward shape for um, something that's supposed to be on a body so um, yeah that's the shape and now I'm gonna start to assemble it and the first assemble step I remember the, ne the other ones I have to figure out again is that I need to close this seam right here so we have something sort of a loop oh yeah I remember I remember that hole so this is the first step and then I will close and then I will turn it across the other sides but I will show you that again what I cut to is oops are a lot of a few strips of uh, the remaining fabric, two shorter ones and uh, one longer one and I made sure that it's the stretchy direction. The shorter ones are just because I didn't have enough left to make two long ones and I want enough um, to tie it in the back and otherwise it's, it's it would have worked but it's not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I will connect those as well to form one long strip and I will sew this. what I uh, show, told you I do in the last clip and that was stitching up the side seam no stitching up the back seam and also stitching the waistband together so yeah I also trimmed this edge down because the fabric doesn't fray it just unravels a little bit but not not bad so I won't bother to uh, finish it in any way I think it will do even when I wash it often what I didn't show you yet I hemmed the um, neckline and I hemmed the hem of the sleeves and I did it by just turning it over once as I hope you can see here and then stitching it down with a zigzag stitch so yeah, because the fabric is stretchy, so you need a stretchy stitch. A straight stitch would um, rip if you pull on it. So yeah, I did that and now I'm going to show you how I stitched the last seam. So I'm really close to finishing this and this, the, this really didn't take long.
So I closed the seam and just tried it on and I had to make um, a few alterations because the back was and still is pretty long for me. So probably because I had a different fabric, fabric I didn't notice it that much on the mock-up but I remember that I took something away here too but I didn't want to make it the alteration the pattern because you know, you can always take away uh, fabric. So I've taken away quite a lot, those two pieces. So about five, six centimeters, seven centimeters, I don't know. And a pretty significant curve here. So tried it on about 10 times now and it should work. Um, I'm not quite thrilled about how much fabric there is here on the top, around the neckline. It's just a little bit too much for me because I don't have such uh, a long back. And in the 50s it was... Surprisingly in the 50s the silhouette uh, showed that the waist is quite low, so the models usually had very long torsos. And I don't, so that is probably the reason behind it. But anyway, I'm gonna go with it and you can see a little bit, if I lay it out like that, how it is supposed to look. So here's the back, this is the waist, and this is bunched up around the neck and this overlaps and here are the sleeves. So I will shorten the sleeves too, because they are too long for me, it looks a little bit awkward. And now I'm gonna stitch on the waistband. So I just pinned the waistband on and I probably made this a little bit more complicated than uh, it should be. My first idea was to um, stitch it together right side to right side, but then I had the problem that this top edge is unfinished here. So like it would have just went out here and that was kind of weird to me. Uh, so I decided to pin it down like this. So I can basically top stitch it down with a 6x stitch and I hope it will preserve the stretchiness. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit fiddly but it should work out fine. And I figured I'd leave the bottom uh, unfinished because it gets a little bit too narrow and it doesn't fray as I said before. Uh, I just did this on the top because of this situation right here. So it just has a smooth line all around. But I will probably, I mean, I don't know, maybe not, maybe I will. But I will stitch this and then I will stitch the, the shortened sleeve as well. So, just sewed it on and I'm done with this thing. Oh wait, not quite. Still need to trim that here. Oh, perfect. Now the wrap top is all finished and I'm just wearing it. And I want to tell you a little bit about my final thoughts on this wrap top since I now have it for quite some time. And it's my second time wearing it out and I want to tell a little bit of how it is and if I suggest making it yourself. So first of all it's very comfy to wear, you can move around in it very well since there are no um, arm openings, and there are no armholes so you can lift your arms like up and it doesn't bother the look at all. Um, also since it's jersey it's very easy to care for, you don't have to iron it, you can just throw it in a washing machine and then hang it up and put it on and the fact that it's jersey makes it also very comfy to wear but the problem I have with it is that the fit isn't great so what happens a lot is that this fabric that is around my neck here just goes down and down when I wear it and then it just is a little bit weird so I often have to do like this one 
that the fabric stays up on the neck and I'm not sure if it's the most flattering with this much fabric around my neck and that's a bit of an issue I have with this but otherwise I think it's a rather cool thing to try out so I definitely would say try it out it doesn't have the best fit but what it does it gives a great 1950 silhouette which was all about the tiny waist and this tiny waist in the 50s was created through illusions as well as well as in Victorian times and earlier but in the 50s the garments around the bust area have been cut very wide actually and like with these bat wings that I have here a little bit so it gives the illusion of a wider torso which gives the illusion of a tinier waist so I think this garment and also with the seam lines in the back it gives it a great 1950s silhouette so if you are a vintage lover and want to sew something rather quick and easy I would say try this, try it out um, so thanks for watching and tell me how you like this kind of video, this vlog style video where I just talked you through the process and didn't really show you the actual steps tell me how you liked it in the comments because it was really fun filming for me and yeah leave a comment and like and subscribe if you haven't already